With this trip here, folks, we are hiking the tallest mountain in the world. It is taller than Everest by a lot. Good morning, everyone. We start this episode in the Tri-Cities Airport. This is the best airport in the entire world. This place is dead. Like security, super simple, super nice. Folks, we are on the adventure of a lifetime. We are headed to Big Island, Hawaii to backpack the tallest mountain in the world. Currently, it's 9 a.m. here in Tennessee. And when we arrive in Hawaii, it will be about 7 p.m. their time. Of course, that means 1 a.m. for Eastern Standard Time. So it's going to be a long day of travel and we have several connecting flights that we have to make. It should be interesting. The adventure starts now, folks, where we have 14 hours of flying ahead of us. My friends, we have made it to Hawaii and we are currently on the Mauna Kea Mountain. Behind me here is the trail. And folks, it is just nothing but up, up, and up, and along with it, intense sun. It is a lot of work to get here because we live in North Carolina, so flying all those hours with very little sleep. When I got here, I was dead tired. I had a headache. I had severe jet lag. So I was happy to have a day to rest and recover. And now I feel like I'm ready to tackle the mountain. Our plan is to hike a little bit, and here in a moment, we'll tell you all all about this mountain and why we're here. As we are heading up the mountain, we are taking lots of breaks in the shade and we will rest whenever we need to. We filled out our permit this morning and got the talk from the ranger and he said that this mountain seems to get even the best of athletes. He has seen people come out and they have to be rescued and he basically told us that, hey, he'll come get us, but he's gonna give us a really hard time if we end up getting stuck or needing help while on the mountain. He mentioned that he would give us a hard time if we were beginning to experience elevation sickness and kept going. 
other than turning around. Very friendly guy, good advice. With this trip here, this is roughly 14 and a half miles and half of it is straight up. With this trip here, folks, we are hiking the tallest mountain in the world. It is taller than Everest by a lot. Everest is around 29,000 feet. This is over 33,000 feet. Mauna Kea is the tallest mountain in the entire world and it is taller than Everest. 19,000 feet of it is underwater. So it may not seem that it's taller than Everest, but it actually is. As far as the elevation gain goes for this trip, you're looking at over 5,000 feet in less than eight miles. The uphill part, that's not the worst. It's the sun. You step out into this sunshine. Oh man, it is so hot, so brutal. There are so many factors to this trip that make it a little bit complicated. It makes it hard and strenuous. You have to take into account that there's very little shade. And as the day lingers on, we're just gonna be in full sun for most of this trail. You might be able to see it behind me here, but we're going up, up, and up. And the view is becoming amazing. Here in a second, I'll show it to you all in more detail. As we're hiking up here, we're making sure to stop as many times as possible. And we're doing so in the shade, namely in the shade of bushes and these small trees. The view back here is incredible, and that's what this trip is all about. We started at roughly 9,000 feet, I believe, and we're heading up to roughly 14,000 feet. It may appear that we are hiking this about midday, but it is still very early. We got up at 4 a.m. to get over here and start the hike. So it is still very early, and we have all day to hike here, which it will take all day. The name of this trip is Turtle Mode. That's what we should call it because we are going slow up this mountain. Taking our time, taking it easy. For this trip, unfortunately, we didn't have time to acclimatize to the elevation. So it's one of those things where we were basically at sea level. <laughs> now we're at 9,000 feet and we're going up to roughly 14,000 feet. We are taking it slow up the mountain and if either one of us starts to have a headache or feel weird, we will take a break reassess and if we have to come down the mountain that's what we're going to do anytime you're out hiking you don't take those risks when you know something's not right or you're not feeling right it's not worth it it's just a hike up a mountain we're going to take it slow so we can get to the top but if it doesn't happen it's okay we are here for each other one of us isn't going to run off and do it go up together come down together susie makes a good point the mountain will always be here if we have to we turn around and we'll do it another day that's life Oh man, that is hard going right there, Susie. And there's no traction. Yes, it is. Hard hiking. Ah, oh, sweet shade. Yeah, shade. <laughs> You're my best friend. You're my best friend. Shade is next. You're my best friend. Then you. I'm talking to you. The mountain that you see here is Mauna Loa, and that is the second tallest mountain on this island. From what I've read, it's about 100 feet shorter than Mauna Kea. We have just come across a level part of this trail and it feels incredible. After all of that uphill, folks, this is steep, no doubt about it. We can call this blessing number one. Blessing number two 
is the breeze that's picked up. Oh, Susie. <laughs> thank God for that breeze. Or thank Allah. W whatever. The view up here really is incredible, folks. So you can see the craters, and now we have a really good view of the cloud layer. And it just looks like a cotton blanket. Above us, we have the road up to Mauna Kea, and Luke and I have driven that. It was almost 12 years ago when we were here, and we did take a four-wheel drive Jeep up to the top. It was really funny because the Jeep started overheating and we had to pull over. And of course, we weren't the only one. Anyone driving a Jeep up that mountain had an issue that day. We have always wanted to come back and do this hike because when we were here, we were in tourist mode. We were on full vacation mode. So we just drove up to the top, looked around. It was freezing cold. I do remember that. The experience that we had with the Jeep was hilarious. Like Susie said, every single Jeep coming up here was pulled over, overheating. So I've noticed 12 years later, I'm not seeing a lot of Jeeps on Big Island. Just saying. What you're seeing a lot of are Forerunners and Mustangs. Those are the two big rental vehicles at the moment, which is really funny. And also a good move for the rental companies. I mean, those Jeeps were having such a hard time. You know, the simple fact is their reliability is just lower than dinosaur bones. So it is what it is. All right, Susie, let's hike. We found a really good shady spot, so it's time for a break. We are going to hydrate and have a snack. The humidity level here is about 5%. So you can imagine how dry that is. I mean, it's just pulling every bit of moisture from you. <laughs> the good thing is, it's drying out our clothing just like that. So as soon as we sweat, <laughs> it's dry. So far, so good with the hike here. I mean, we're really going up. It's just stunning. When Susie and I were here roughly 12 years ago, it was our wedding anniversary. And guess what? It is now again our wedding anniversary. We don't have to talk about how many years it's been because I don't quite remember. <laughs> 22? A lot. Yeah, it's a lot. She doesn't know either, so hey, I'm okay. Anyways, folks, you know, it's like we came up here and we saw this incredible volcano. The views were amazing. The landscapes were unlike anything I've ever seen before. And since that point in time, it's been on my mind. I want to hike that mountain. I want to hike that mountain. So for years, I thought about it. And then one day, I Googled it. And what do you know? There's a hiking trail from the visitor center all the way. Well, it's almost to the top. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, from the visitor center to the top. And that is why we are here today. This is one of those bucket list hikes for me. Even though it may not be the most grand hike of all time, this is something that I've wanted to do for a really, really long time. It's epic for me. It's epic for Susie. And hopefully you all are going to enjoy it as well. This hike is truly a challenge and I honestly love a good challenge. I love pushing myself, doing hard things. It makes you feel good inside. And like Luke mentioned, this is a bucket list thing that we both wanted to do. We wanted to come back here. We wanted to hike up to the top of this volcano. And we've talked to people that live on this island and they said, if you wanna do it, do it now. There's always potential in the future for public access to be cut off here. And it's also just one of those things, if you wanna do it, don't talk yourself out of it, don't put things off, just do it. So that's why we're here doing it. And it is hard, but it's very rewarding at the same time. Before we came out to Big Island, Hawaii to do this, we talked with a number of locals who live in the area. Basically, we wanted to get information about like what was okay to film and not okay because this is a sacred location for the Hawaiian people and we didn't want to do anything that would be considered disrespectful. 
So we talked to numerous individuals. We can film just about the entire hike. There's a lake up here, I think it's towards the top, which we were advised not to film, so we're not going to. We really do appreciate the viewers who helped us out with that aspect. That's pretty funny, Susie. <laughs> That's under a little bit of pressure there. A few years ago, we were in Colorado going up in elevation, and I had a sleeping pad in the back of my truck that was inflated. The pressure inside of it got so high that the pad exploded. It sounded like a shotgun going off in the back of the truck. We were cruising down the road, it scared the hell out of us. <laughs> mm, I learned a lesson that day. Let's take a second here and let's talk about the terrain. So basically what you're looking at is a combination of talus and scree. Overall, I'd say the hiking isn't really all that bad. You take one step forward, you go back about half a step. We've done some hikes before where it's like one step forward, you know, almost a full step backwards and that really sucks. We're about a mile and a half in, it's low pace this morning, but overall, I think we're right on track. With this landscape here, back in 2012 when Susie and I were exploring this area, I remember thinking to myself that the Mars rover was actually out here. You know, like NASA could completely fake that thing. You throw that rover over here, there's parts of it that look just like Mars. I bet you there's conspiracy theories about that. Definitely. Definitely. Our progress on this is slow and steady. We go up about 100 yards, break. 100 yards, break. Susie is taking a moment to reapply some sunblock. Smart idea. This is mean Bob up here. Mean Bob. Many, many years ago, I made the mistake of hiking out in exposed areas without putting on any sunblock on my lips. 
So I was out all day long, my body perfectly fine, my lips were sunburned so bad. I mean, imagine just blistered, burned lips. Not only was it incredibly painful, it was also incredibly embarrassing. So folks, anytime you're going to be out in the sun for a long period of time, especially in a situation like this, where the sun is so extreme, you have to get sunblock chapstick. You'll regret it, big time if you don't. As far as the elevation goes, so far so good. The air is thin. <laughs> we come from around 6,000 feet, but yet we could tell the difference. Like the one big thing that I notice, of course, is like the lack of breath, but like rapid heartbeat. Yeah. Like as soon as I get winded, it's like thump, 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 thump. I'm not feeling sick or anything. We're taking it slow. And when we feel out of breath, we just stop, catch our breath, go again. Turtle mode. Turtle power. Turtle power. If you want the Outdoor Gear Review Turtle Power shirt, let us know in the comments. Oh yeah. Speaking of which, we've heard from so many who want new merch. We're working on it. We put up a few items for you all, which you can find in the store, but more is to come. For the majority of this hike, the shots are going to be either in front or behind. And there's a simple reason for that. This entire area is a historical site and it is highly discouraged going off trail. I mean, you could go off trail, step on a rock, disturb it, and it may look like nothing more than a rock, but it could have some importance. So because of that, the shots are going to be limited somewhat. The way I see it is that we're lucky to be here. The truth is access to this could be shut off at any point in time. So if you're going to come out here, make sure to follow the rules for everybody else. That's the way I see it. There may be videos of people going off trail and hiking all the way to the top. Essentially, they're breaking the rules and that's what ruins it for everyone else. Luke and I always make sure that we are allowed to film, that we have permission and that we're filming in the right locations. And that way everyone else can come enjoy it. Or if you're not able to make it out here, you can enjoy it through our video. I want you all to focus on the trail here. It goes up and around keeps on going up snakes keeps on going all the way up there i don't know if we mentioned this or not but this trail is very steep <laughs> very very steep luckily everybody there's a nice breeze that's making this possible if the wind wasn't blowing i don't know if i could do it the sun is just so freaking hot We continue to go up this very steep section here. It looks like we're close to the top of it. Not to the top of this mountain, but this one section. The trail goes up, winds over here, and crosses over here somewhere. Susie has found us a huge rock right next to the trail for us to chill at. Oh man, I cannot wait to get out of the sun for just a minute. As you all can hear, it's very, very windy 
and it feels incredible. I'm a little bit out of breath. We are currently at 10,630 feet. And this has been some very hard hiking, especially the last mile or so. I mean, super steep, super steep. I think we are getting close to being halfway up the mountain. Mm -hmm. So we are making good progress. We are gonna take a snack break, which will be a little bit longer than our short breaks while we're walking. It's definitely time to eat something. Definitely. Anytime you're doing a hiking trip like this and you're gaining so much elevation, when you take a snack break and give yourself 10, 15 minutes, it gives your body time to adjust. So once we eat, drink some more water, we will be ready to push over the top of this part. And I can see that the scenery is gonna change. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see the view when we get over the top. Now that we've come over the rise here, we're following the trail up and it looks like it goes between two extinct volcanoes. And then from there, who knows? As we're hiking up here, I can't get over how freaking cool it is that we're on a volcano. Everywhere you look, it's just ancient lava flow. It's really neat. Since we're taking a break here, I'll tell you all a story. So we touched down in Hawaii on July 4th, the 4th of July, right? Right at sundown. We make it over to Walmart about eight o'clock. Fireworks start going off from the parking lot, from this store, from that store. People were setting off fireworks from all over the place. So as we're walking in, there's a massive explosion over our head. Someone shoots off a mortar, right? Well, check this out. The guy who did it was holding it at the time it apparently blew his hands off, pushed him back so hard, he hit his head on the ground, and he died. We were driving around Kona, and it was just absolute chaos. I've never seen anything like it. You could see fireworks from everywhere. Even when we landed, everywhere you looked, you would see them. Driving along the roads, you would see them. So when we got to Walmart to get some supplies, we couldn't believe it. You could literally buy them, run over here, and set them off, and that's what people were doing.
as an update we're about four and a half miles in definitely this section is not as steep as the first part but without a doubt this is grueling it's also kind of fun the landscape is varying i wish i was more of a geologist and i could tell you all what we're looking at here but i really can't dark lava over here brown lava over there that's all i got folks that's all i got try to sound super smart susie today we are on mauna kea it's the tallest mountain in the world it's covered with metamorphic rock the things that are on this mountain ancient so historic so sacred sacred the energy here it's metamorphic metamorphic energy yeah did you just use that word twice yeah okay We are getting closer and closer to the top. There's the main road zigzagging up the mountain. At some point in time, we will have to intersect with that. I'm not entirely sure when that is though. We are getting fairly close to the lake. It's right around the corner up here. Our plan is not to film it because it's such a sacred location that's used to this day. We will visit it. Apparently that's okay, but we're not going to film it. I don't have much new to report other than it's just up, up, and up. Super, super steep. I have to say, everyone and Susie, this is without a doubt the hardest hiking I've ever done. Like we've done trails all across the country, Colorado, super steep stuff. No, nothing compares to this. It's a combination of like elevation gain. I mean, you're talking about 5,000 feet in like six miles or something or other. I mean, it's, it's a lot. And the other aspect is that you're exposed to the sun. It's just so brutal. At the same time though, it's worth it. This is amazing. The fatigue is real and it's hitting me about now. We're very close to the top. We probably have about a mile left and I know that we're close to the lake, but the fatigue has just hit me and I'm like at a wall and it's a struggle. But I know I'm gonna get to the top, even if I just go a little bit, stop, a little bit, stop. I've just got to push through this wall of fatigue that I'm feeling. Susie and I, we have returned from the lake. It's right over this hill here. Very cool, very cool. And again, that's a sacred location that's used to this day. And there's even signs of it being used. All that I know about it is that it's an offering to the gods. Inside of Susie's backpack is a Reuben. Oh my gosh, we ate half of it yesterday. It is amazing. I cannot wait to get to the top to eat that sandwich. We will have coffee and a sandwich, but for now, banana time. It's banana time, Susie. Banana time. I like your moves. It hurt bad to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see it. Oh, good. You don't want to.
we're coming up from this way and we have to go over here hop on the road all the way over here and then up top I bet you the road walking is going to be sweet I hope so I bet it is we are so close less than one mile and by the way this place is dead we've counted like five cars going up Let's see, three people on the trail total, I believe, besides ourselves. This has been an amazing hike. This will be the final update before we're up at the top. We have telescopes up there. We're headed this way. This is the way to the summit. behind me you will see the actual summit of Mount Achaia but you are not allowed to go there so we want to respect the wishes the rules this counts as hiking to the summit we're done I know exactly what she's thinking <laughs> like thank God it's over <laughs> that was awesome yeah Whew. Susie let's walk around here a little bit and then stop and have lunch what do you think This is officially the highest that you can go. We have Mauna Kea over here, a sea of clouds. Very, very cool. Susie's done. She decided to stay back there, rest a little bit. You have to remember this hike is only half over. I have to say that it's easily one of my favorite hikes of all time. Super, super hard though. It was well worth the effort. Well, my friends, this marks the end of the Mauna Kea hike. That was incredible. This was one of the most challenging hikes I've ever done. And it's all because of Bob. <laughs> the sun played a major yeah. factor in the difficulty of this trip today. Mm -hmm. But good job, we good did job. it. Did it. We can mark this off of our bucket list. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to say that the people that we have seen hiking, they're a lot younger than we are. It's true. And I'm not saying it, you know, to toot our horn or anything, because I'm saying, hey, this was really hard for me. I struggled. Yeah, it was tough. But like sitting here, I'm like, wow. Like, I'm so proud of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you. We did it. You know, I don't know how much longer we can keep doing like really hard things that we want to do. True. Having kids so young, put Luke and I in a spot where we had to like focus on family, raise our family, and we didn't do a whole lot of stuff we wanted to do. Right. Now we're doing it now, but we're much older. So, you know, good job to us. And 
We're gonna keep doing the hard stuff, but this was, whoa, just so hard. <laughs> we wanna give a special shout out to Fran. Thank you so much for your help on this trip. We really do appreciate it. And Kevin, thank you as well. This was an amazing trip. We hope you all enjoyed it. Strength and honor, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.